are sort of three stages. Um, one is the, that kind of acquisition stage, level of approval, various levels of approval that need to go on during the acquisition stage. The other is the production stage. I'm going to say a little bit less about that because that's sort of further down the road, but I'll, I'll try and say enough to give you a kind of overview of, of the types of, of uh, uh, things that are involved in the production of a book. And I'm going to leave uh, the portion of your involvement with a press after the book appears, and, and that is a very that is a very important that that is still a really important uh, you, you know your job is not done uh, once you have your book in your hand, and in fact people are concerned about uh, marketing and distribution and the extent to which their book gets reviewed and other kinds of considerations like this. Um, but you work quite closely with the marketing department at a press for those types of things, and in fact I think there is a panel. Uh, tomorrow There's. or uh, later on in the week where a variety of marketing managers uh, from, from university presses will talk about, about what you do. So suffice it to say that that third stage, there are things that there are things that there, there's work that needs to be done there in terms of your work and your collaboration with with the press, but that can better be addressed by a bunch of marketing managers. Um, so uh, <clears throat> um, during the acquisition stage, I'd say uh, you know you can sort of break it down into um, pre-contact and post-contact uh, <laughs> in, in in good good Canadian historiography terms, um, and and pre-contact is a stage when you're doing uh, a bunch of research uh, about where does my book go, what kind of publisher what. As Randy alluded to, there's lots of different kinds of publishers, but you know, in most cases, it will be a university press publisher. But you're trying to find a publisher uh, where you think your book will be a good fit and where where it'll be best served. Um, so, <clears throat> I guess what I want to say, as far as this pre-contact stage, there is a certain amount of research that needs to be done. So, uh, websites websites are really useful. University presses these days have very detailed and informative and uh, hopefully aesthetically pleasing websites. Uh, and everybody is checking each other out on the web. So don't be afraid to spend a bunch of time checking the university press out on the web, because suffice it to say that there is probably some editor somewhere checking out your department web page profile or <laughs> looking up your dissertation and dissertation abstracts international or something like that. So there's there's a you know there's there, the, that that kind of research sort of lacks the human touch or whatever, but it's really important research and there is a lot of information that will help you make that decision uh, on the web. Um, uh, of course, book fairs. Mm -hmm. like the one that go on here, are really, really useful. Uh, I know Randy just got back from uh, a conference of geographers in Quebec City, so often you'll be lucky enough to meet an editor at various other kinds of conferences. Of course, in Canada, most of the scholarly associations all meet at the same time, so the Learned's Book Fair is the hot spot for being able to uh, you know, walk up to somebody and say, hi, I'm a prospective author, you're a prospective editor of my book, and you can talk about the project in that way. Um, of course, you know, for the other 51 weeks out of the year, it's probably not always that easy. Um, but, but in a sense, it is that easy, um, because if you decide, if you, if you think a publisher might be interested in your book, or, or you, you would be interested in publishing your book with a particular publisher, uh, the, the proposal stage is very important, and as Lisa alluded to, like the proposal stage, um, the proposal is a is an informational document, but it's also something that's going to be useful for you. Like the process mm -hmm. of going through putting together a proposal is very useful in terms of. Uh, uh, summarizing and giving an overview of what it is that why you think your book is important what it's doing that other books haven't done what literature it's engaging with kind of what what is the sort of motive force of your book um, and so I would I would you know while it's often good to make a contact with publishers prior to a proposal, and if you're having difficulty with some aspect of that proposal, or you're not sure what to include, there's obviously there's guidelines on all of our websites and most university press websites about what to include in the proposal. And, but 
but if you um, <clears throat> if you've spoken to an editor at a conference before and you have that person's business card in your hot little hand, you can always call that person up and say, I'm, I, you know, listen, Jonathan, I'm in the process of putting together the proposal for this book that we discussed way back in, in uh, early June in Vancouver, and uh, you know, I'm wondering about how to do this or wh whether I should include this chapter or that chapter or, or what I, and you know, you can get some feedback on that. Um, the other thing is if you, if you don't, like I say, if, if you don't have that person's contact information, um, it's on the website. So just go to the website. Often, um, uh, I, you know, I know at UBC Press does this. Uh, McGill Queens doesn't, but um, it will, and U of T does this as well. It'll list the sort of areas that the editors specialize in next to that editor's name. So, you know, mm -hmm. find out who you think the best editor for this for your book is, and even though McGill Queens doesn't, uh, <laughs> you can always <laughs> phone up an editor, and if that editor isn't the right person, they'll sort of forward your call to the office next door, and you can talk to that person about, listen, I'm thinking about submitting a proposal for this book, here's what this book is about, here's what I'm sort of thinking about as far as the proposal, and you can get some feedback. So, uh, you know, we're all friendly people, um, and, and we're all, uh, I, I don't know about Randy, Randy, you seem to travel around a lot more than the rest of us do, <laughs> so you're living the jet set life, but other people, our editors are, uh, um, you know, sitting at a desk, behind piles and piles of paper and just yearning yes. for a little bit of conversation with, an, with the human contact, with interesting people, with interesting things to say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and if we don't pick up, it's because the phone is lost under <laughs> giant piles of paper. So, so all of that, you know, and you can do this by email too, you know, either way. All of this to say, you know, A, it's never too early to talk to an editor. Um, B, don't be afraid to talk to an editor before submitting your proposal. And C, the proposal is a, is a, is a good thing for you to do as mm -hmm. well as a good piece of information for us to determine if this is a project that is the best fit with the press uh, and, and, and also you know, how we're going to work together and collaborate on this book. Um, so. Um, right, so the proposal, the, so eventually the proposal gets sent in. Uh, proposals are things that, um, uh, I mean, I don't want to speak for other people too much, but it's, it's something that, that you have to spend a little bit of time with. Mm -hmm. We may get back to you with some questions about stuff, but in general, the evaluation of a proposal is relatively quick. Like I would say, you know, within a month. You know, if you haven't heard from someone after you've submitted your proposal for a month, then you know you can call them up and say what's going on. Um, but uh, but I'd say it's it's a pretty good chance that we'll get back to you within a month. Uh, we we we, I mean, we may get back to you the next day, but it's not likely. So um, don't be afraid if we don't write back the next day. Uh, but you know, we usually sort of send you a note just to say we got it or whatever, uh, and. Um, you know, you can send these things in hard copy or, e or by email. I guess, you know, certain people have preferences regarding that. You should look at the website of the press that you're submitting to see if they have something about that. So um, <clears throat> I'd say, uh, and, and the proposal, because why the proposal is such an important document from our point of view is it's, we're, we're making the decision on that basis to indicate whether you should submit your manuscript to us. And, um, and under what conditions, maybe, sometimes, that, that submission would be appropriate. Um, and, and by conditions, I mean like, well, you know, you, an editor may say to you, well, you know, I think you really need to revise your introduction or something like that, or, you know, make other, other types of uh, recommendations, um, which you can talk about uh, uh, as, as appropriate or not. But after that proposal, the next, the next stage is you go off you finish doing all the revisions that you've laid out. Um, uh, if, if, you're, if your proposal involves a project that's based on a dissertation, um, 
or you make that one last research trip to that archive in Ireland that you got to go to and get one little piece of paper or, or a bunch of little pieces of paper and figure out how to you know rejig your fifth chapter or something like that, um, and and <clears throat> ultimately you know uh, lo and behold one one day this finished manuscript arrives with mm -hmm. your editor.